One something, two's a party, and, and three is something else. I forgot how the expression goes. It's top 10 scandalous criminal couples in history. Hope you guys aren't on here. Number 10, Bonnie and Clyde. They kind of wrote the book on couples doing bad things. Where if a bad couple happens to make headlines, they could be described as a real Bonnie and Clyde, a modern Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow were as thick as thieves, two peas in a pod. Merciless crooks that formed a gang in the early 1930s and wreaked havoc across middle America by robbing banks and exercising their second amendment a little too liberally. They were becoming a real thorn in the side for law enforcement. To make matters worse, they were becoming somewhat idolized for their crimes by some of the public. Not good. However, not even a Ford V8 could help them outrun the law for too long as one day in 1934 it saw the young couple ambushed by agents. And by agents, I mean they turned the car and the crooks into Swiss cheese. A lot of blam blam going on. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't good. Number 9, Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka. Despite Canada being a majestic land full of moose, mounties, and rivers of maple syrup and politeness, it's not all fine and dandy up here, folks. Mm -mm, nope. We have our fair share of whack jobs, too. Take, for example, Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka, a Canadian couple who in the early 90s took part in some heinous crimes, including the de-lifing of Carla's own sister. Ooh, and maybe even some sexual related crime. It was not it was bad. When it came down to the trial, Paul was going away for a very long time. Nothing was going to change that. However, Carla got the plea deal of a lifetime and got a fraction of the time compared to Paul. However, videotapes found after the case show that Carla was much more involved than previously thought and would have given her a sentence much closer to Bernardo, maybe even the same. She's currently a free woman. Gross. Number eight, Charles Manson. Okay, this one isn't so much a couple as it is like a thruple or like a groupal. Lots of people in her twenties. Anyway, uh, just a weird group of hippies. But Charles Manson was involved, romantically speaking, with uh, his family members or cult or uh, whatever you want to call it, rather. You can't get much more scandalous than Manson. The Manson family took refuge at Spawn Ranch, an abandoned ranch that had been used as a film lot in the past, located in sunny California, Los Angeles. The family often experimented with mind-altering substances, uh, the same ones that made the Beatles the Beatles. Unfortunately, it wasn't all fun-loving and vegan commune happy brother at Spawn Ranch as the family became involved in numerous criminal activities, which eventually involved in the de-lifing of an up-and-coming movie star, Sharon Tate. You ask your mom and dad about her, She'll, they'll tell you, they'll remember. If you've ever seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, then you'd also understand. I try to relate things, make it more relatable for you, but ask your mom and dad, they'll tell you about the 60s. Number 7, Susan and James Carson. Susan and James both had some troubled backgrounds. Can't have a criminal without one, really. They fell in love and, well, they fell in love with the same illicit substance that made the Rolling Stones, uh, the Rolling Stones. They changed their last name to Bear and well, it just gets worse after this point. God had written letters to them to do so. Eventually, they declared themselves witch hunters and began a spree of violent crimes. Because that's just, you, that's what you do. The bodies in the evidence kept piling up and they kept disappearing. A manifesto was eventually found calling for the assassination of then president Ronald Reagan and late night comedy legend Johnny Carson. No relation. They were sentenced to life and remained suspects in a bunch of unsolved cases. Ooh, I don't like that, that's gross. Number six, the Rosenbergs. 1950s America, what a beautiful place. Imagine if you will, you have a suburb with green grass, white picket fences and a starter home. Dad buries his PTSD from the war and takes out his anger on the family sometimes, even violently. Mom is a stay-at-home mom who's on so many prescriptions she's forced to lay down during the day with a vodka martini just to get her strength back from a headache. Oof. All while under the threat of atomic annihilation. Oh, America the brave, America the beautiful. Except the biggest thing every American feared back then was actually communist. Yeah, I know, right? Who would have thought? Communists coming to take over because they threatened the great American way of life. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg looked just like any other couple you'd find in the suburbs, except they were Soviet spies. Spies that aided a group that was leaking atomic secrets to the Soviets, allowing the Soviets to have a nuclear program years before the Americans suspected them of having one. Both D life by the state after being found guilty. However, Ethel wasn't as guilty as previously thought and could have received a lighter sentence. Oops. <laughs> Our bad. 
Oh, she's innocent? You know what I mean? They gonna flip the switch. Oh, dude, I already flipped the switch, dude. Too late. Number five, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Does this really need an introduction? That's all anybody's talking about right now. But Johnny Depp, one of America's greatest actors and teenage heartthrob on 21 Jump Street. Am I right, ladies? God, he was cute in that. Amber Heard uh, being some lady who had a breakout role as a fish lady in Aquaman. I haven't seen Aquaman, that's just what it looks like to me. And all of this in one of the messiest divorces ever publicized. Yikes. This trial is happening as I speak. Probably right now, it's happening right now. And we are slowly reaching the outcome. However, all I'll say is when two gorgeous millionaires marry each other and you mix in some illicit substances, well, are, are we really surprised this didn't work out? Johnny Depp we're talking about here. If I ever get rich and famous, I will never treat my loved ones like that or any of the amazing people that follow me. I love you guys. You're the best. Thanks so much for watching all the time, guys. I love you. And checking me out on my own socials. Oh, shucks. You guys are the best. Number four, French royalty. Imagine being so down bad with your husband that it starts a revolution and then inspires other European nations to be free from monarchical tyranny. Marie Antoinette and King Louis XVI were the last kings and queens of France. If crimes against humanity don't count, then I, I don't know what does. People had no rights, even less rights than truckers in Ottawa. Oh, that's the worst. It was a very interesting time in history. By the end, the Castile had been sieged, heads were on pikes, and the National Razor was brought out just to show how democratic a new government can be. Next time, be sure to share food at the bread table. That's all I gotta say about that. Number three, Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Talk about scandal. Oh, if we had social media back then, this would have been everywhere. A regular Romeo and Juliet. And a little bit of Bonnie and Clyde too, actually. Cleopatra had a few Roman men wrapped around her finger. It was politics, and she was playing the long game. The Starvex lovers were playing with two empires, some of the largest at the time. However, their political string pulling and bedsheet wrestling would come to a tragic end. Cleopatra and Mark Anthony would never be around to see their empires fall after some betrayal, and both of them having their lives taken away. They did, they did some naughty things in between that, though. They weren't there in ours. Number two, Mustache Man and Blonde Lady. Hey. Even the biggest, baddest guys in history get lonely. Ava Braun, Mustache Man's main squeeze and wife right up until the Red Army came a-knockin'. Oh boy, they came a-knockin'. We all know what he's guilty of, and honestly, I think she's kinda guilty too. We've all seen the lost German footage of the boys making plans at the eagle's nest, and there she is. I'd say that doesn't look too good. I'm not a lawyer, or I am, but it doesn't look too good. It's kind of like if Adam and I were on an episode of Cops, and we got pulled over in a car together. The footage made it to the show, which means there's something in the car. It all depends on who wants to take the blame. Otherwise, you're guilty by association or an accessory to the fact. So, yeah, I think she is kind of guilty too. Mm hmm. Yep. If you weren't guilty, you would have gone out in the bunker with him. You know what I'm saying, Chris? You know what I'm saying? Eh. Number one, Mussolini and partners, because he had more than one. A lot of people think Mustache Man did it on his own, but the truth is he had a lot of help from his fascismo friend in Italy, Mussolini. From organizing his fascist beatdown gangs with the brown shirts and all the war crimes in between, Mussolini had a hand in it. He showed him, showed him the way. Mussolini not only did all this while married, but kept the company of unsavory mistresses. It's a good thing he controlled the media because people wanted to say some bad things about him and his most favorite mistress, Claretta. His wife, Rachel, stayed with him up until the end when him and Claretta were brutally unalive by citizens fed up with his chin, he had a chin thing, and his fachismo government. Multiple crimes against humanity and cheated on his wife. You know, we, we know you knew better. Come on, let's be honest. That's gonna wrap it up for me today, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. I love you so much. And if you too want to not be bad guy, good guy like me sometimes, then check out my social somewhere down below. And of course, thank you again for everyone that's come and followed and checked my stuff out. I, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching here and checking me out on my own socials. I hope to see more of you guys. We're going to keep growing. I love you, little honeybees, sweet little honeybees. I love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>